New inflation numbers are deeply troubling. We know Canadians are struggling with this global inflation crisis. Canadians are all also suffering with the skyrocketing increases in the price of food. Inflation remains a hot topic inside the House of Commons and, of course, on the minds of Canadians. New numbers from Statistics Canada show inflation hit 6.9% in September. That is down slightly from the month before. For more on what that number means and how it's calculated, I'm joined by the head of Statistics Canada, Chief Statistician, Anil Aurora. Nice to see you. It's a pleasure to be with you, Ms. Barton. Well, suddenly we're all talking about inflation more than we ever have probably in, in many, many years. Uh, so I want to try and break it down. When people see that 6.9%, what is that really telling us about uh, the cost of things? Yeah, I mean, that's the all items aggregate number of uh, what's going on. And in fact, that number fell slightly from 7% last month and what we're doing there is comparing the price of a basket of things that we an average household would consume uh, year over year and saying what is that price difference so as you said uh, you know we have to unpack that number to really understand sure. what's going on so what kind of work goes into finding that number like how do, how do you f how do you find it yeah, interestingly enough, first, first of all, what we do is we find out what does a, a, an average household consume uh, in a given month. So we break down all the different parts of, of, of what we would consume from, you know, what do we pay for a rent or mortgage, you know, all our utilities and so on. What do we spend on food? What do we spend on transportation, gas, uh, the odd time you might buy a car? Uh, you know, what is your mortgage payment? All those things. And then yeah. what we do is we uh, capture, in a sense, that change of that basket weighted to uh, you know, that percentage that we use, and then we give that number. And then we unpack it and break it down yeah. into, you know, if you take away food and gas, which are more volatile, what would that number be? And then we go into very, very great, we, we go into uh, details uh, in terms of, you know, what are, what's going on with food or what's going on with shelter or what's going on with different parts or components, if you like, of that basket. And the way we measure it is we actually get, um, uh, data from retailers. So when you scan your, you know, the can of beans or, or, or the broccoli, um, that comes to us on a regular mm -hmm. basis. So there, we're talking about millions, if not hundreds of millions of those transactions that come to us. And then we have partnerships with retailers, with, yeah. you know, the, uh, the, the folks that do the property assessments. Um, and from there, we have formulae that allow us to find out on a consistent basis what that price is doing. Now, th there has been some criticism from, well, the Conservative Party at any rate around the, the numbers that you use to calculate the, the CPI, the Consumer Price Index, suggesting that you're missing the true impact of inflation by shifting the weighting on things like gasoline and housing. It, what do you say to that? Do you believe that your numbers reflect reality people are seeing or are they slightly, um, maybe not quite as reflective? Yeah, I think we let the data talk, right? I mean, that's that's I think usually the good thing to do. Um, yeah. So as I said, you know, we survey uh, tens of thousands of households and say, you know, what are you consuming? Uh, and then we look at what is that percentage of consumption. That's how we derive the weights. And that methodology is, by the way, internationally used. It's mm -hmm. something that, you know, we've had the CPI in Canada for, uh, you know, since, uh, uh, since 1914. So it's something, yeah. you know, we want to be careful also, as I say, you know, you, you want to measure things. You don't want to be, you know, uh, changing your tape measure uh, as you measure things too. Right. So right. keeping things constant, you know, using a methodology that uh, uh, policymakers use is really, really important. So we stand behind the robustness of the methodology. It's, it's international comparison. As I said, you know, it's it's formed based on hundreds of millions of quotes of you know prices that we see uh, every single month. So, so tell me, when people talk about core inflation, how important is that to understanding whether we are headed towards something worse or things are improving? Yeah. It, you know, fluctuations in price, uh, uh, you know, on things that are more volatile is common. We've, we you know, we've seen that, uh, you know, so some, so it's important to see what are the underlying things that are actually resulting uh, in multiple things changing and the persistence, if you like, of that change over time. Uh, so the core essentially takes away food and shelter and says, okay, what's happening to, you know, and, and that's where, you know, we have to unpack that 6.9. If you say, well, it went down from 7 to 6.9. So if you now start to look at the underlying 
uh, aspects, that in fact went up slightly. Right. Um, so it's telling you that there are uh, uh, factors at play here uh, that go beyond, you know, sort of short-term volatility of, of prices. So, so the fact that the, the the overall number went down slightly, but the food inflation remains very high, yeah. just over 11 percent. What what would you say to Canadians who are, are very concerned that it's, you know, that's really affecting their lives? We're going to talk yeah. to someone shortly about that. But what what do you say to them about those kinds of increases on things that they they need to live? Yeah, yeah. You know, first of all, I mean, uh, you know, most of us. Uh, uh, you know, go and shop for food on a very regular basis, yeah. and 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 so you know it's front and center. Uh, it's something that we see, uh, and you see the price changes. And and in fact, the CPI uh, uh, you know shows us when you look at food. Um, you know, we haven't seen this kind of increase year over year uh, since 1981. You know, yeah. 11 point yeah. 11 point four percent. So, yeah. and when you see the you know prices of bread or baked goods or meat or I mean. These are double-digit increases, and they're persistent. You can see them, you know, uh, having having stayed there. So it's front and center. It's something that you see every single week or every every month, uh, and you notice it, and and it's it's real. So you know, for many, uh, you know, this is impacting their their bottom line, and so many of our other statistics uh, show as well that. Uh, you know, it's hitting, um, you know, the young, the people who are starting out, the seniors and so on. Uh, it's hitting them hard because, you know, that number is going up and, yeah. you know, their incomes are fixed or the amount that they've got is fixed. So uh, it, it is it is worrisome. And, and so you can see it and the numbers do show it. I, I do want to ask you about the census because that's the other big part of your job. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, you're releasing more data from the 2021 census just this week, I believe, as you've been doing since February. And I wonder what is the what is the biggest challenge right now with taking that information and trying to paint a picture of what Canada looks like right now. Yeah, I mean, the census was conducted, uh, you know, last year, uh, and so all that that you know, first of all, thanks to Canadians. I mean, ninety-eight yeah. percent response rate. That's pretty, pretty amazing. In the, yeah. You know, yeah. in the middle of a pandemic, that too. Yeah. So I just want to just want to recognize and thank Canadians for you know the value that they place in this agency, but also the value of good data-driven decisions. And so you know, we've been putting out data from the census and uh, in in releases, and the next one, as you said, you know, comes out on Wednesday. But this one focuses uh, in on immigration, ethnicity, you know, place of work, mobility. Uh, you know, so there's a, a, a rich, rich source of data that's going to come out. And again, it's going to be really, really important for decision makers to take note of these changes that are happening to the fabric of this nation. I'll just end on this. When we started seeing inflation creep up last year, there was a lot of um, talk that it would be transitory. Clearly, it has not been. W when do you think we will start seeing some relief? Is that something you can project from the information you gather? Uh, I wish my crystal ball was really, really clear. Um, and uh, uh, you know, I think I think what what I can say is that you know there are some elements uh, that impact certain products more. So if you look at food, for example, uh, you know it's really dependent on weather. It's dependent upon you know things like the input prices, like fertilizer and so on. It's yeah. uh, transportation and labor costs. So you look at you know the even the geopolitical instability, and that has an impact on these kinds of things. So you know if you see those events happen more, and you see that instability continue well uh, you know as we get into the winter months and we're going to have more of our food you know brought in well that's going to have uh, uh, you know impacts on on those things so they, if they go in the right direction well we'll see uh, a positive outcome if they don't go in the right direction unfortunately I think you could see some uh, you know c continued or even worse uh, kinds of outcomes so well, now one has yeah. to just keep in mind that yeah. you know uh, uh, these elements form a certain percentage of the overall basket and right. and so uh, you know there is a relative weight that is assigned to these things super interesting thank you I really appreciate the explanation behind something that we've been talking about on a daily basis at this stage so uh, thank you for explaining it thanks for your work Anil Aurora nice to meet you thank you sir it's a pleasure thank you Canada's chief statistician